So in this lecture, we're going to take a look at three-phase transformer construction and modeling. And I'll, I'll work a few examples and get into a little bit about how we would model three-phase transformers in a power flow program like windmill. Um, before I get into that, though, um, let me talk a little bit about some changes that have been made recently for the U.S. market as far as transformer efficiency. And uh, what you see is you see a table uh, associated with a Department of Energy um, DOE energy efficiency standard for liquid immersed transformers. And so these are transformers where you have a tank and the transformer sits at the bottom and it's actually covered up with oil. And these uh, were in effect at the beginning of 2016. Um, we're not really including those in our homeworks yet because there's really not that many of these devices out in the field yet. But these would be the new transformers would be uh, getting installed. And note what it does is it specifies a minimum of efficiency at 50% rated load. And so they're doing this at 50% rated because this is typically where transformers would be operating at most of the time, right? And so anyway, what you can see in the table is they, then they have like a, a rating for the device. And so this is starting at uh, 10 kVA on the left for single phase transformers, uh, starts at 15 kVA for three phase transformers. And basically what it says is that um, if you, when you're operating at 50% rated load, then you need to have this minimum level of efficiency. So whether that's going to be no load versus uh, copper loss, this is kind of up to the, the manufacturer, the transformer to, to figure that out. But you'll note when you get to the larger sizes of transformers that we're operating up in the, you know, 95 and a half percent. And so when you see some of our examples, we're probably coming in around 98 or so. Um, basically what these energy efficiency standards are designed to do is basically um, result in a fleet of utility transformers, uh, you know, where the losses aren't as high. And that means uh, we don't have to have as much generation and cost with, with serving load. So these are the values for liquid immersed transformers. And then there's a similar table for what we call dry type. Uh, dry type, as, as the name suggests, uh, does not have a oil-based um, cooling basically then the transformer is sort of encased in a resin and so that's what's sometimes referred to as a, as a dry type transformer and you have uh, efficiency levels associated with that and you note they they're also somewhat dependent on the the vil level that that's related to how much of a voltage transit the transformer can take at the front end so anyway i just thought i, I would mention that um that we are working toward having higher efficiency transformers out in the field for the US market. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this lecture into three different parts. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the construction and connection types for three phase transformers. And then we'll get into some calculation examples. And you see, this is very similar to what we would have for single phase. Uh, and then for the third part, I'll kind of walk through a windmill analysis. I'll actually do a live demo in the online section. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about loss of life due to overloading. So as far as how we come up with a three phase transformer, there's three different, there's two different ways we could do this. One would be I could just take a single phase transformer and connect these up. Uh, so Based on the way I would connect these up on the primary side and the secondary side, I can get a delta connection versus a Y connection. So that's one way we can build it. The thing you could see on the left is this can take up quite a bit of space. And so if space isn't an issue, then yeah, by all means, go ahead and use three single phase transformers. That would give you the most flexibility. Uh, and this would maybe be the case for if you're gonna mount these up on top of a pole, right? Or you have plenty of space for that. However, a lot of situations, space is a little bit more of a consideration. And so this is where we would have the three phase transformer actually in, encased in like a, a tank where we're gonna have different types of core designs. And so the core designs are, are kind of shown here where you're gonna have what's called um, 
five-legged versus four-legged versus three-legged cores. And so what the leg corresponds to is the leg of the ferromagnetic material. You can see there's five legs in this case, there's four legs in this case, three legs in this case. And what we'll get in these three instances, we'll get different flows of flux during imbalance conditions, all right? So if things are gonna be balanced, then it's not as much of an issue what type of core design we use because under balance conditions, and if you have three, phase, three phases of flux circulating these cores in the A, B, and C phase fluxes would tend to cancel each other out. But if you have unbalanced conditions, unbalanced currents, then what you're gonna get is you're gonna get imbalanced flux flows in the core. And that's gonna um, give you um, different effective impedances for the zero sequence. And so it, it does make a difference if you're talking about like doing fault analysis, if we have like a five-legged core versus a four versus a three. For what we're gonna be doing in this class, it's not gonna make any difference as far as our voltage drop calculations. But if we were talking about doing fault studies or other transit studies, it, it would make a little bit of a difference here. All right, so depending on, you know, what you want for the zero sequence path, then you may select like a five versus a four versus a three legged like type of core design. So if we're talking about like a three legged core, then this is a three legged stack core shown on the left. Basically you're gonna have the A, the B and the C phase windings around leg one, leg two and leg three. And it's a very simple cost effective type of design. So this is, very, very common to see this type of construction for a three-phase transformer. It's fairly inexpensive. And then if you would put this into a tank, then you could actually cool it, uh, cool the windings as the, um, the, the current goes through them and you start to get I squared R types of losses. On the right shows a utility transformer application or maybe a large industrial application where you have a three-phase transformer. And something else I want to point out is the cooling fans on here. And so a lot of times when you see a transformer, three phase, a large unit, you'll see one rating, which may be called like the OA rating, uh, outside air only. And then what you would have is you would have uh, maybe a couple other ratings, depending on whether you have one set of fans or both sets of fans on. And so you have these cooling fans that cool the circulating oil that's going through the transformer. And of course, when you turn the fans on, you get more losses, but you can in increase the effective rating of the transformer that way. Uh, and so anyway, um, this is very, very common, like in a substation where you're gonna see this, this kind of unitized three-phase transformer as, as, as well, a lot of large um, industrial loads. So as far as three-phase transformer connections are concerned, we're gonna have a variety of different primary and secondary options. So remember primary is gonna be the, the medium voltage side, secondary is gonna be the low voltage side connected up to the customer. Um, we could have a YY type of connection um, and those could be ungrounded or grounded on either side. We can have a Y delta type of connection or um, conversely like a delta Y and we can have delta delta connections, right? And so there'd be various reasons why you would want to have like one type of connection versus the other. So I just want to talk about that briefly. But the connection type that you're going to want to use if, you, if you're going to put a three-phase transformer in the field uh, depends on what your, your grounding needs are, right? So for example, if you need to ground on the secondary side for your service, then you would want to be using some sort of a wide ground connection, right? Um, the connection type also is dependent on what types of voltages you need. There's a way we can actually pull some single phase voltages off of a three phase transformer connection, which we'll get into in just a little bit. It kind of depends on whether on the primary side you have a four wire supply or just a three wire supply. Uh, and then the big thing is what do you want for what we call the zero sequence path? In other words, what do you want to see for the ground currents 
if we say had a fault on the secondary side or we had a fault on the primary side, what do you want to happen with the zero sequence path? And this is where this overlaps with protection practices. One other thing you get into is something called ferroresonance. And so if you're worried about ferroresonance, this is, this is gonna be, I'll just show you in a picture in just a little bit, um, then that's gonna maybe determine what type of transformer connection you're gonna wanna use in the field. And I just want to point out too that besides three phase transformer connections that are consist of basically three single phase transformers, there's also other sorts of options uh, for having unbalanced transformer connections where you, you can actually use two transformers in order to supply three phase. And so these are sometimes referred to as open connection types, like an open Y and open delta. And I'll, show you a picture of that just so if you see it, you, you know what it is. So as far as the sequence circuits are concerned, if I've got Y ground, Y ground, if I got both sides ground and Y connection, basically I make a zero sequence path between the primary and the secondary side. All right, so I can actually have if a fault on the secondary side. And if it's um, single phase, let's say, that I'm going to see that on the primary side. I'm going to see these currents flowing through the neutral. If I have a Y ground delta connection on the Y ground side, the pass closed, but on the delta side, it, it's open. All right. So we just have the zero sequence circuit made on one side of the transformer. If it's Y ground delta, then we're going to get an additional impedance in there due to the tie resistance to ground. If it's delta delta, we get circulating currents, but it's open on both sides. If it's ungrounded Y delta, then basically we get open circuit. And so um, getting to later on this semester, um, you know why we want, want to have one type versus another type, but it all kind of comes down to what do you want to happen with the zero sequence path when you have, when you have ground faults on the circuit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post a couple tutorial papers by Schweitzer Engineering Labs on symmetrical components. If you haven't had this before, it provides kind of a tutorial on use of symmetrical components. And we're not going to use that a lot in this class, so, you know, because it doesn't always apply. Um, but it would be kind of useful. So when I go by my, my method, which is kind of kind of make use of phases A, B, and C and be good for unbalanced circuits. You can kind of do a comparison to how you would actually do this using symmetrical components, which is the way things get done if you're going to do, say, like protection or work on transmission circuits. So this is a very common connection, this Y ground, Y ground connection. If you're going to supply industrial load, um, say like at 480 volts or commercial load at 280 volts line, this would likely be the transformer you're going to see. Um, note that you have solidly grounded windings on both sides. On the secondary side, then basically you're, you're making the ground, which the customer is going to use. In line, you could have 480, which would correspond to 277 line to neutral. Or if it's a commercial load, a lot of times this is 208 volts line, which corresponds to 120 volts. So very common type of connection. And, and basically, if I have a fault on this side, uh, I'm going to see a neutral current because of that on the primary side. This is what this would look like if you were making this out of three individual transformers. And so let's suppose you had a single phase transformer had this dual voltage like we were talking about for residential loads where you basically had a connection X1, X2, and X3, where between X1 and X3, you'd have 240 volts. Between X1, X2, or X2 and X3, you'd have 120. And so in this case, I would have a four-wire primary side. And then when I connect the windings up, I connect them up as shown to phases A, B, and C, where the H2 connections are connected to ground. What I'm doing in this case is I'm paralleling the secondary winding. So I just have 120. And basically, this doubles the current rating. And so 
if I connect the X1 to A on transformer one, transformer two, I connect the B, transformer three, I connect the C, then this gives us a Y ground, Y ground connection where the phase relationship is maintained. So if I had zero degree reference on the primary side from capital A to neutral, then I also get a zero degree voltage from small a to neutral on the secondary side. And so in this case, we say there's a zero degree angular displacement. There's no phase shift going between the primary side and the secondary side. Another sort of connection is a, is a delta Y ground connection. So you could have a primary that's three phase, or you can have a primary that's uh, four wires, but we're, we're not connecting up the neutral. And this is something you could also use for providing 480 volts or 280 volts line. Uh, so kind of similar to what we had for the Y ground, Y ground connection. Now, in this case, basically, if I had a short circuit over here, then basically, if all these currents have to add up to zero, I get no zero sequence current. And so if I had a neutral over here, I would get I would not see this ground fault. I would not get any sort of a current through any sort of neutral on the primary side. And so basically what we say in this case is for ground faults, what this is going to do, it's going to have the effect of blocking a zero sequence current, which may be good or bad depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, the other thing that happens with this type of connection too is if I had harmonics, what we call triplin harmonics. So let's suppose I had 180 hertz components, uh, what we would call like a third harmonic, then it turns out that those harmonics will circulate through this delta connection, but they won't get out onto the primary side. Then basically we're gonna get a cancellation effect. So it's nothing you need to worry about that much in this class, just be aware that if I had third harmonics or ninth harmonics on the secondary side, they get blocked going back into the primary, which may be a desirable thing you want from this connection. Uh, so for the grounding, the customer does reestablish the ground on the secondary side. And this type of connection is very highly susceptible to what we call ferro resonance. And so when situations where ferro resonance is an issue is if I have a delta connection, let's say, and we have a cable, and a cable has a lot of capacitance to ground. So we have these connections between say like phases A, B, and C to ground because of the cable. And what can happen is we can have a scenario where we're doing switching and one of the switches, if we're say switching open sticks, in this case, this phase C switch is sticking right now, right? So what happens is we get a path set up between phase A that can go through one of these transformers and make its way to ground, okay? We get a loop that involves an inductance and a capacitance. And so this is kind of the scenario we have. And what's dangerous about this is that this transformer inductance uh, turns out to be nonlinear, can actually saturate. And so what this means is there's two operating points. Um, there's an operating point where the, the voltage will be normal, but there'd be another operating point where it's abnormal. Uh, once, if this transformer core is driven into saturation. So the exact phenomena behind this is a little bit beyond the scope of what we wanna cover in this class. We do cover this in the transits class in 587. Just be aware that what this is gonna do is it's gonna it's gonna get put you at risk where if you're looking at voltages in the circuit, all of a sudden the voltages get multiplied because we get a resonance between the inductance and capacitance in the circuit. And so if we get a situation where these two impedances add up to zero, then we're we're in trouble. So anyway, just kind of be aware that there's certain types of transformer connections where if you somehow violate the balance three phase condition that you can get these LC paths, which, which can cause trouble. So the way this would be set up if you had three single phase transformers as is shown in this diagram. 
where what you have in this situation is you have transformer one, transformer two, transformer three. Again, we parallel the windings on the secondary, the single phase transformers that give us 120. And note what we're getting in this case is we're getting 208 volts line to line and we're getting 120 volts line to neutral. Now, what's interesting about this, and you can, we'll go through an example later on, it kind of shows where this comes from. But what you see here is as I go from the primary side to the secondary side, and if I look at the voltage angle for voltage VAB, capital AB on the primary side, I look at that same voltage on the secondary side. Uh, what we're going to see in this case is we're going to see um, a phase shift actually occurring. And so, um, this is something you got to keep in mind. I, actually, I should have said between A and N, not A, small A and B, but small A and N. So there's actually going to be a phase shift occurring in this case. And so um, we're not going to be modeling this or be too concerned about this because if you just simply had one transformer, it's not a big deal if you're shifting the, the phase going between the primary and secondary side. But where you run into trouble is if you have two transformers there. Okay, so what one transformer does is it gives you a minus 30 degree phase shift, and then you could have another transformer. Instead of giving you a 30 degree phase shift, gives you a 210 degree phase shift. And then basically, the two secondaries, if you were to try to parallel them together, won't have compatible voltages anymore. Um, so anyway, you got to be very, very careful about how you connect these transformers up. And you can see there's not a whole lot of, sorry, there's not a whole lot of difference between these two diagrams. The only thing that's really different is in the way the primary is connected up. And so some of you are going to make a very simple wiring mistake, then that would change the, the phase shift relationship. All right. So another option um, would be to have a floating Y delta connection. Um, you have ungrounded Y on the primary side and on the delta side, know what you have that's different in this case is you have a center tapped winding. Now, why would you want to do that? Suppose you wanted to feed motor load and you wanted to have a larger voltage for that, but you also had residential type 120 volt appliances. What you could do is you could actually center tap one of the windings. And so instead of getting 240 line to line with the center tap, you can get like a 120 between one of the phases and the ground. And so if you center tap it and you ground this, this gives you the option of, of getting a single phase of, of 120 volts. And so this is also kind of shown here at the bottom for a delta delta type of connection, similar sort of a deal right here. Um, because if you have a delta winding, that's initially ungrounded, right? Basically, what you can do is you can put the ground anywhere you want to now on this delta side because this is isolated from the primary. And so if you go ahead and center tap, this just gives you this ability of having 120 volts. And so anyway, this is what this connection would look like in this case. Again, uh, and whenever we have like two different connection types, if we have like a Y delta versus delta Y, you, you should always be on the lookout that you're going to get a 30 degree phase shift. Uh, this isn't something that generally shows up when you're running power flow analysis, like if you're doing like a Millsoft study, a lot of times they don't even show this 30 degree phase shift. But if you were going to go into the database, I mean, you could actually, you could actually see that. So as a planner, we don't care about it. Um, but where this could again run into problems if we were wanting to use two transformers in parallel or connect up the secondary to transformers uh, this, this phase shift could be problematic. So as, as far as features for this, you know, why would you use a floating Y delta? Well, if you need um, an ungrounded service. Um, and so, you know, this would give you like the 240 plus the, the 120 for the um, appliance type of load. The other thing that's interesting about this is if I built this out of three single phase transformers, and let's suppose I lost this connection right here. 
All right. Well, if I would lose that third transformer, I would still have under balanced load conditions, I would still have a three phase set of voltages because if I define this voltage and if I define this voltage, which is going to define this voltage and just this voltage, then basically that's going to give me a certain line to line voltage across this third transformer that I could have removed from the circuit if it would fail. And so you have some options for these types of connections where you have a single transformer fail out of the three that you can still, you can still supply load. The, the problem you run into with this sort of arrangement is that if you're trying to make use of this, you can run into some more, um, you can run into unbalanced um, voltages across the load. So the fact that I've got this connection, if I had a significant amount of load on this 120, that would tend to, that would tend to imbalance the voltages three phase. So you, you don't get um, something for nothing in this case. You know, the thing is, is you want to make use of this sort of connection. You just have to make sure that you don't have too much single phase load that, that are unbalances um, the set of transformer connections. And as I mentioned in the slide here, it's, this is also susceptible to ferro resonance because of the ungrounded nature. So anyway, um, here's a delta delta con connection, very, very similar to what we showed before. And if you were gonna connect up this delta delta connection, this actually shows how you can connect up all the individual windings. And this shows a case where we would have three transformers being used. You can also have situations, as I mentioned before, where you could have just simply two transformers supply three phase. And again, what, what happens in this case is, is if you have, a, say, like a Y side, what this is going to do, this is going to give you a voltage across this winding. Uh, you're also going to get a voltage across the other winding. So if I took a measurement now between this point and this point, um, this would give me that third voltage without having to have that third transformer there. And so this would maybe be a situation you see is you've got two phases and what you're trying to do is you're trying to get a third voltage set so you can supply say like a motor load. And this will work as long as that motor load's fairly small because this is gonna result in imbalances on the circuit. And so uh, even though you can actually supply three phases over here from two phase and basically kind of derive a third phase. You don't want to use this for situations where you have a, a large amount of load. But what you could do is, you know, if you start out with something like this, you certainly could upgrade to three phase later on. If you were going to, you know, add another phase wire in here, then you could actually you know, add the third transformer. There. And so anyway, here's what um, this would actually look like. Um, if you simply use this special purpose to transformer connection actually shows how you can make all the various connections in here to get the three phase voltage set, even without having that actual third transformer in the cir circuit. Um, here's another sort of variation on this. This is an open delta connection where we have two transformers that's giving us a delta delta service. So we're going to have a table that's going to give us data uh, about these transformers, kind of similar to what we had for the single phase, uh, except obviously this is for, you know, three phase transformers like, say, like pad mount transformers. Uh, note that the three phase transformer sizes are going to be larger as for standardized sizes in the single phase. Um, but it also gives you like, what's the excitation current, what's the no load or the core losses. Um, what you expect to see for percent voltage regulation and for the percent impedances. And one thing I want to point out that these percent impedances are quite a bit bigger than what we have for the single phase transformers. And so this kind of gets up for the larger transformers. It gets into the five to six percent uh, per unit range. Um, but just like for single phase, then, you know, we we have different voltage um, levels to be thinking about. 
And in the left, you see the values for a 208 line. This would be more for commercial transformers. And then on the, the right, you see this for 480 volts line. This would be what you'd have more for industrial applications because more process control, you know, would require higher um, power loads. And then we would have to generally go up to a 480 volt secondary for that. Uh, note that you've also got these tables set up for different sort of primary side voltages as well. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and stop here. Then in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go through some examples.